Cedric, welcome to the cave. Hey, thank you. Thank you. Glad to be here. Excited times for you. You know, you got a new film coming out in a few days. Uh, Ambulance, man. Uh, how's, how does it feel uh, it, coming up? It feels great, man. You know, we did this movie just over a year ago and it's, the posters are everywhere. The, 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 the previews are everywhere, man. It's, it's, it's an exciting time and I'm excited uh, for everyone to see it. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so, so I was trying to do some research on you, my friend, and I want to know, like, how did you decide you wanted to become like a pretty much a storyteller? What made you get into the industry? Because you grew up in Alaska, you don't yeah. hear a lot of like actors coming out of Alaska. Right, right. There's actually a few more than you know, but yes, yeah. I, um, I was a singer first. I still am a singer, but yeah, I, I'm a son of a evangelist. My mother's a preacher, so I went to church a lot, and we sang a lot. We sang in the church choir, then I sang in the mm. school choir, and that kind of got me my start, and so that led me to musical theater in high school, and that's when the bug really bit me, and I really wanted to take acting seriously um, at the advice of the theater uh, teacher there, and so I went to Howard University, studied it, got my degree there, and then went to New York, did the whole New York thing, got an agent, you know, was a waiter and all of that. And, uh, you know, just year by year, just started to go. And then I had some big ups and some downs and some ups and all that. So uh, are you still based out of New York, New York now? Or are you in like, no, LA? I left New York years ago. So right. I moved to, um, I got a film called American Gangster. And at, before that came out, I yeah. moved to Los Angeles. Wow. Yeah. Who are like some of the people that influenced you in the acting world that you kind of like, not not like model yourself after, but like study after them just to, you know, better yeah. your craft? Yeah, you know, well, Denzel, of course, was, was one. I've always admired him. Mm -hmm. And uh, I went to school, I went to Howard University. Um, and when I was there, there was a young man who had just graduated and he was mm -hmm. still always around the school and We'd see him, he'd be reading a book or writing, and I really got to know him. His name was Chadwick Bozeman. Okay. And he ended up being a good friend of mine and wow. kind of like a mentor. I really looked up to him a lot, and still he's one of the best actors to me. Um, I watched everything he did from his plays, you know, to um, read the scripts he wrote. Um, and so that's, that's, that's someone that I miss a lot and who um, I really admire as an artist. That's awesome. Yeah. It was... Um... Was your goal at first like just like theater or was it, a, what did you always like in, in your mind, you're like TV, film eventually? That's interesting because of course I started in theater, but it was sometime yeah. around after I graduated and I got to New York, um, I wanted to focus on television and film. Mm -hmm. There was something about um, everyone being able, it reaching a broader base. Theater is amazing and there's no feeling like theater but to just be in everyone's home and them to experience uh, what you're experiencing as an artist is, is something pretty special. So yeah, that's been my focus for the yeah. most part, for real. I've had other guests come on before and they've done both also. And one of the yeah. questions I like to ask them is like, what do you like the most out of both? Yeah. And what's the uh, most challenging between the both? Yeah, oh, that's a good question. Well, it's hard to say what I like the most, you know? Um, the feeling you get from theater, because theater, you can't hide in theater. Mm. You, you, I will say this, you have to be good and quite the artist to be a theater actor. Yeah. And we have uh, several amazing TV and film actors, but you cannot be that amazing and look pretty good as a, as a television and film actor. It's just, you know, there's magic and there's different things that can be done, you know? But the difference is, Theater is, it's, it's several hours and it is harder on the body. You know, you're doing shows. If you're on Broadway, you're doing a show eight times right. a week, eight times a week. And if you're on that show for a year or two years or three years, you can do the math on that. Whereas film, you shoot the movie for two, three or four months, how long it takes. And then you're done with that, that project. But right. each has their own, you know, level of difficulty, you know, right. so... How do you prepare yourself? But like, because you know, like, you, if you do like a theater and you go on your play, you're you're on stage for two hours. How do yeah. you prepare yourself before that compared to like jumping on a film set or movie set for a 10, 15 minute scene? Yeah, you know, I think it kind of takes the same preparation. You know, um, 
it's it all depends on the character work that you do. I know for me, I I, I write a whole biography on the character, where he went to school, where he mm. went to college, you know, what, what his parents did and all of that. So I think the preparation side, because you want to get that character in you, is it's different for everybody, but for me, it's 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 the same. It's the same. I approach it the same way. What do you feel so far in your career has been like the biggest accomplishment so far? Ooh, the biggest accomplishment, you know. And what's I, the goal? What's the goal? Yeah, yeah. I think the big, biggest accomplishment is not quitting okay. because, you know, I've been doing this professionally for about 15 years, close to 15 years. And there were many years where it was an up and down struggle, even up to recently, literally everything, all of this stuff has kind of happened for me um, during COVID. And so there, there were several times when I wanted to give up or thought, okay, I have a family now. I have a five-year-old. I have a wife. Uh, you know, this isn't stable, stable. It's stable sometimes, but not all the time. So it's really a mental, you know, thing that goes in your head, you know? So I think the big, biggest accomplishment was not giving up. And, you know, my goal is to do this until I don't want to do it anymore, until my body says, all right, that's enough, you know? So yeah, I want to I want to keep on doing it because it makes me happy and why not do what makes you happy? Right, right. Was there ever like a backup goal? Like, okay, like okay, if I give it a few, you know, certain amount of time where if you don't keep mm -hmm. going, it would like maybe decide to work behind the scenes or yeah. Yeah, you know, um <laughs> the only thing I thought as far as in the entertainment industry is if I wasn't in front of the camera, I okay. still plan to be behind the camera, whether that's producer or director, but it always was still in that field. But I honestly, I just didn't imagine doing anything else or I couldn't, right. not that I can't, but yeah. it's nothing that I wanted to think about too much because I thought that would talk me out of doing this. Right. Which, it makes sense. you know, which, which could happen if you're, if things aren't going the way you want to, you know, yeah. what's been your favorite project that you've worked on so far, you think? You know, I think one of my favorite projects I worked on, not because of the project itself, I did an indie film called The Least Among You, where I played a young man in the 60s who went to an all-white seminary, and that was opposite mm -hmm. Louis Gossett Jr., wow. um, who won an Oscar for an officer and a gentleman in, I think, 1983, something like that, and he was just, he's such an amazing man. Um, I still talk to him sometimes, and I just learned a lot from him and, you know, he always brought me little inspirational books or quotes and he, I mean, he was just like, <laughs> he's just like a grandfather and um, I never had a grandfather that I knew or met. So that was one of my um, favorite experiences because I was the lead of the film and I was right. on set every single day from the first day of shooting to the last day of shooting and I feel like that just kind of it taught me how to be on set. It taught me how to be there for mm -hmm. long days. It taught me how to stay in character. It taught me how to um, treat uh, the crew and, and all of those things. So I learned a lot from that. Uh, what's the best advice he gave you? Because he's been doing this for many years. Oh, he's been doing this for many, <laughs> many, 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 many years. He's done a lot of things. But one thing that stuck with me was don't let anyone tell you who you are. Mm -hmm because that could happen. People could tell you who you are and in this industry, you know, don't let anyone tell you who you are. So that, that, that kind of stuff with me. And that's what I, I stand by. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, right before we jump into this, there's one question I was yeah. told to ask you because uh, they follow your career. What's the deal with playing all these law enforcement roles throughout your career? No, not, right? <laughs> Dude, it's crazy. Uh, my neighbor and I, uh, we used to talk about that all the time. I'm like, I play, I played soldier soldier, uh, police officer. Uh, I mean, and, and I take it as a compliment, you know, yeah. uh, to play these uh, men. I don't know what it is. I'm a, my father uh, and my mother were in the military, but that okay. was before I was born. So I never actually knew them as soldiers. By the time yeah. I was born, they were out of the military. So mm -hmm. I guess it's just in my blood or they people see something and, you know, I'll yeah. take it. I, I like I like playing them. Did you ever say like, hmm, maybe I should have went into that field? <laughs> no, no, absolutely not. Oh my God, I remember a recruiter coming over to the house and I let him come over to the house just so he could talk, but I already knew, nope, nope, I'm yeah. going to be an actor. 
And they're like, That's okay, sick. well, you know, this is also, we also have, I'm like, nope, I'm gonna be an actor. Yeah. Thanks so. for coming. <laughs> So let's, yeah, so yeah, let's jump right into Ambulance. Uh, how yeah. were you approached for this project now? Oh man, so Ambulance, this was what, 2020, okay. it's COVID. I had just left LA. We left LA for a while to go to Dallas uh, with my wife's uh, family, just because, you know, schools was closed for my little kid and everything was just kind of crazy. Anyway, yeah. I got an email, you know, like a weekly email, like I do for an audition, read it, and it, it said Michael Bay film um, starring Jake Gyllenhaal. I was like, oh, okay, that got my attention. Hmm. But they wanted it the next day. Wow. So they wanted it as soon as possible. So I um, looked at it. I filmed it right there in the bedroom the next day, sent it and forgot about it. And the interesting thing is this was the first time I had to do the audition with someone on FaceTime on my computer. Uh, my wife wasn't home. She took my kid away to get out of the house and... I was so nervous about that because I was like, oh, an audition without a real person there. Usually you call a friend over. It was my friend was on FaceTime. I said, let's see if this works. And sent the tape off. And a month later, literally, it was like, oh, you got it. You're Michael Bay's choice. I'm like, what? All these years doing this. And I do a FaceTime audition in the bedroom. And then it's like, oh, yeah, Michael Bay said, yeah, you're the guy. I don't know. I'm That's like, awesome, I'm, though. I, yeah, it was great. But I was like, I'm done trying to figure out how, how this industry yeah. thing works because I didn't think in a million years I'd get the role. I just didn't think that that was going to happen. So wow. it was very. What, what, uh, what did the description say for your character? And right before you did the, this audition, it was really short. It was. It didn't say much. It said, "Male, open ethnicity, so it could be any race." Yeah. Um, 30s. I said, "Okay, perfect." <laughs> um, and really. Um, is like an older brother to his younger partner, mm. hard worker, something like that. That's all it said. Wow. So, yeah. Did you did you find it easy since you've played a similar role before? Uh, well, Mark, this role wasn't like a military guy. I, I have played a, a police officer before, like for a very short scene, like in an episode yeah. or something, but. I did have a sensibility just of, of who he was, you know, someone who's a hard worker and, and there's, um, there's a young guy who's a, men, a mentee of mine. I'm a mentor to him. He's a young actor and yeah. I've been working with him for about, you know, six years and, you know, g giving him advice. And so he actually read with me. So I also think reading with him, someone who's like a younger brother to me, someone who, you know, does look up to me, there was a natural chemistry and connection yeah. that I really think played a good part in my audition team. Uh, what did you love about Mark? About who? About Mark? Mark yeah. I love but Mark did not care who got in his way. If, if Mark has something on his mind and he, and he has a mission, he's really determined. And, and his, his thing was, I'm going to save my partner. I'm going to get my partner. And so Mark stopped at nothing. And I think that's, I think that's really honorable, especially if, you know, he knows the job he signed up for and that was to protect. And that's what Mark, Mark does. Any challenges playing the role? Throughout oh, the absolutely. Yo, do you yeah. know how heavy those uh, police belts are? <laughs> I, like, oh man, it's like, you got the gun, you got the taser. It's, it's really heavy. Yeah. And Michael thought I, you know, should jump over a few things. And I'm like, okay, this is, you know, so. Oh, so you're doing your own stunts too. <laughs> I did some, to a certain extent. I had a great yeah. um, stunt double, great stunt double, but some of the things I did and, you know, with that belt and, you know, carrying the equipment, like that stuff was a little bit of a challenge. But after mm -hmm. a few times, you know, you get used to it. Right. And some of it is hard, so it should look hard, you know? Yeah. So. Where, oh, where was the movie filmed? Uh, downtown Los Angeles. Oh, wow. Yeah, wow. everything was shot in downtown Los Angeles. Wow. How yeah. long were you on, on set for for the movie? About two, I would say about two months. We started around mid-January and we're done by mid-March. So, yeah. Uh, how was it working with, like, the cast and, like, even working for Michael Bay? You know, it's interesting. Um, this, you know, was a movie shot in COVID uh, before any vaccines or any anything like that. So it was, it was, it was a little crazy. Um, and I really wanted to get to know the cast, you know, more, but, you know, if we weren't on set, we were supposed to be in our trailers, you know, we were, the contact was limited. Yeah. So, 
getting to see them in the scenes was great, but I really wanted to like really get to, you know, I wanted to hang out with Jake Gyllenhaal and, you know, Yaya and everything. So yeah. um, I know that'll, that'll come, you know, soon, but it was, it was great. And Michael Bay shoots very fast. He's intense and he shoots really fast, but his movie is goes really fast. Mm. So it makes sense. And for the most part, not every day, but for the most part, things were kind of shot in order. And I liked that as far as the storytelling and for me as an actor, how most things were shot um, somewhat in order as, as yeah. much as it could help. So I noticed you, him like that a lot. So. You mentioned intense. Were you nervous at all working with Michael? I was. I was yeah. nervous. I was nervous because things were fast and I just wanted to do everything right. Mm. But that was just like the first week, you know, first week and a half. And then I, you know, was right in there and you know yeah. comfortable and confident in who mark was you know so yeah when the whole thing went over you once so when the whole thing wrapped up and finished what was the one thing that michael said to you that sticks out to this day ah no tip so when i first met mike michael <laughs> the first day he comes over um he comes over hey hey guys hey yeah okay so we, he was looking to see if he i had like a little beard to see if i was going to keep the beard and um I had hair and I was hoping they did not want to cut my hair. And um, he said, okay, we'll shave. We'll keep the beard. I mean, we'll keep the beard. Um, no, we'll shave the beard. We'll keep the hair. Um, all right, man, you work out, Sid? I said, yeah, I work out. I'm thinking like, of course I work out. Can't you see I work out? He's like, okay, yeah. Um, well, you know, work out, work the arms. Yeah, keep, keep, keep working on the arms. Yeah, yeah. I was like, what? <laughs> I looked at the other guy like, what did he just tell me to keep, what are you trying to say? It was so funny. So I'll <laughs> that's never awesome. forget that. <laughs> that's, that's awesome. Uh, so uh, we know it comes out April 8th. Now, what's yeah. next for you now for projects? Anything that you're, you're allowed to tell us about? Yeah, yeah. I, um, I'm happy to announce I will be joining Shondaland on the, uh, as a recurring character on Grey's Anatomy. So I'm oh, actually awesome. doing that right now. And I will be recurring in the end of season 18. Wow, that's awesome. Congratulations on that role. Hey, thank you. Thank you so much. So uh, other than that, anything else coming up for you? That... Uh, we'll see, man. Yeah. yeah, so that's got me busy right now. And, you know, wanting people to see Ambulance and yeah. I'm open. I'm ready. I'm here to work. Now, is Ambulance just directly to the theaters or is that going to be available streaming also on that day? Yeah, it's just only in theaters right now. Yeah, okay. awesome. only in theaters. So, and, and it's something you got to see on the big screen. I mean, it's... Well, it's Michael Bay. You have to. Yeah, <laughs> IMAX, you can. Just, you know, just yeah. go all out. It's just one of those movies. Yeah. Uh, Cedric, lastly, how can the viewers and listeners find you on social media? I am on Instagram at, at Mr. Cedric Sanders. And Cedric, this was great. Uh, thank you for coming on and good luck yeah, with the man. film. Absolutely. Thank you.